okay? Question number five. Eaton Custom Guitars expects to pay a $3 dividend next year. The new dividend will reflect the firm's commitment to continue increasing dividends each year by 5%. The return on the market is 10%, while the expected return on 90-day T-bills is 4%. Okay. The firm's beta is 1.15. Determine the intrinsic value of the stock. We begin the same way. Let's write down our formula. V equals D1 over R minus G. Okay. They expect to pay $3 next year. So they've given us in this problem D1. What we don't have is the required rate of return. So we will use the capital asset pricing model to determine the required rate of return on this stock. Remember, the return, the required rate of return using capital asset pricing model is the risk-free rate plus the return on the market minus the risk-free rate times the beta of the stock. Our risk-free rate is 4%. The return on the market is 10%. The beta of the stock is 1.15. So the required rate of return using the capital asset pricing model, we get 0 0.109, which is 10.9%. So in our denominator, the required rate of return minus the growth rate of dividends of 5%, which was given, we're going to arrive at a value of $50.85. And let's look at the key points of the dividend discount model. Okay, V in the formula is value. It's the intrinsic value of the stock. Sometimes a P will be used, which represents price. Don't panic. It's the same formula. In the numerator, we've got D1. Okay, notice again the subscript 1. That means the dividend one period from now. It's a dividend that has not yet been paid. It is a future dividend. In the denominator, we've got R. R is the required rate of return. It's what investors require based, uh, based upon the perceived riskiness, it's the rate of return that investors require before they will invest in that stock. Generally it's given or one might have to use the capital asset pricing model to determine the required rate. Okay. It's also common to sometimes see R expressed as a K. Don't panic, it's the required rate of return. The G in our formula is the rate of constant growth. Most likely it would be given. But it is possible, as we had in one of our previous questions, it's possible that you might be expected to solve for the growth rate. Okay. Sometimes in these problems, as we saw in a few of our questions, you're given the current dividend. Okay, D0 and you're expected to solve for next period's dividend. That's not a problem. In fact, it's quite easy, isn't it? Take the current dividend, DO, times 1 plus the growth rate to get D1. What are the assumptions of the model? These are very important. You can only use this model to value a stock that pays a dividend. That's why it's called a dividend discount model. Okay. Second, the dividends must grow at a constant rate in order to use this model. And finally, the required rate of return, R, must be greater than the growth rate. Take a look at the denominator. R must be greater than G. If R is less than G, then we have a negative value in the denominator. And that would give us a negative stock price, which makes no sense. 
If R and G are equal, then we get zero in the denominator. And zero in the denominator doesn't make sense. Okay, that value would be undefined. A variation on our dividend discount model is this one, which we can use this formula to determine the expected rate of return on a stock. Okay, R is the expected rate of return. P is the stock price. D1, as before, is next period's dividend. And G is our rate of constant growth. The first part of our formula, D1 over P, is the expected dividend yield. It's an income yield, isn't it? It's showing an investor the percentage of the return, a percentage return, that is an income yield. G is the expected growth rate in dividends. The common stock of Dietz Diametrics is currently selling for $55. That's the price. The firm recently paid a $3 dividend. Analysts forecast that the dividends will continue to grow at the historic 6% level far into the future. If you buy Dietz stock today, what is the expected rate of return? Okay, let's start with our formula. R equals D1 divided by P plus G. Okay, we need to solve for D1. D1 is equal to DO times 1 plus the growth rate. The current dividend is $3. The growth rate that was provided is 6%. So next period's dividend is expected to be $3.18. So we simply take $3.18 divided by the current price of 55, add the expected growth rate, and we get 0.1178. So what is the expected rate of return on the stock? 11.78 percent. Let's try another one. Feral Technics common stock is currently selling for $80 per share. The firm expects to pay a dividend next period of $2.75. Notice it said they expect to pay. The growth rate in dividends is expected to continue at its long run rate of 5.5%. If you buy Feral Technic stock today, what is the expected dividend yield? Okay, so let's start with our formula. R equals D1 over P plus G. Now please look at what the question really is. It's the expected dividend yield, which is only this portion of our equation. So D1 is $2.75. The current price of the stock is $80. The expected dividend yield is 0 0.0344, which is 3.44%. Okay? That's all they asked for here was the expected dividend yield and not the expected rate of return on the stock. So what are the key points? Well, we see that this formula is really a variation or a um, manipulation of the dividend discount model. All right. We're solving for the expected rate of return. As before, D1 is next period's dividend. P is price. And so D1 over price gives us the expected dividend yield. G is the rate of constant growth. Okay. This really this formula is consistent with what we know about investing in equity securities. Because the return to an investor really consists of two parts. The first part is an income yield, and the second part of the return comes in the form of a possible capital appreciation, the growth and the value of the asset.